How's it going guys? Strife here. Um, I wanted to make a update to my warrior guide. A few things have changed since the last build video that I made. Um, I also wanted to add a great sword build because I get a lot of questions about that. So first thing, um, gear change obviously with ascended uh, gear and fractals coming out. I upgraded my rings my back piece. So instead of the knight's rings with ruby jewels they are now just both of the berserk um, ascended rings then also the back piece. I found that I really didn't need as much toughness and the added damage um, that the ascended gives and the crit with Omnom Berry food provides enough survivability still especially if you're running in a organized group. Um, since there are no knights pieces for ascended gear as well it's really not an option. Um, if you don't have ascended gear you can still use like knight's rings with rubies in them, kind of like what I used to do. Um, as far as my build goes, you can see I'm not using a longbow currently. I switched to axe mace with axe axe offhand. Um, so I put the sigil of battle in my offhand axe. You're going to be switching every five seconds, meaning every ten seconds you'll be switching back to the axe, so you'll have six stacks of might always up if you're constantly switching, so Sigil of Battle is pretty good. Um, I'm still using the Perception Sigil. If you don't like stacking um, Sigils, you can use like Force is good, 5% more damage. You can't really use another proc Sigil because it shares the same cooldown as Battle. So if you proc something and then switch, since you're going to be constantly switching, you're not going to get the 3 might stacks. So I think Force is probably the best option. You could also use like Bloodlust if you don't want to use Perception Stacks. Bloodlust is pretty good for 250 power as well. Um, so the actual build, you can see I took 10 out of Tactics. I put it into Arms. Um, some people brought up the point that a lot of times when you're putting down your banner uh, for a boss fight, especially in like a heavy DPS group like the dungeon videos I do, you're going to kill the boss within 90 seconds anyway. So a lot of times you're not going to be recasting the banner, so it's kind of not as useful to put 20 into tactics. You still have the option of using banners when you need it, but you can also just switch to empowered most of the time, or if you're using longbow, you still have that option as well. Instead, I put it into arms. That's going to give you another 5% crit from the precision. It's also going to give you um, rending strikes is what I took, which is going to add DPS for your entire group and since this is a heavy crit build um, it's going to be 99% now once I'm fully buffed. You're pretty much critting every single time so you're going to heal two-thirds of your hits, you're going to put vulnerability and bleeding on one-third of them so it's pretty uh, good trait swap. Um, some other people if you don't really like tactics that much uh, an option is to put 30 into strength instead and take um, the axe mastery as well. Right now I do dual wielding because the 5% base increase in damage actually increases your damage more than the 10% crit. Um, that changes with how much crit and crit chance you have, but with the high crit chance, high crit damage build, the 5% base is actually better. Um, one other option that I've seen people doing is they forego basically all your burst skills and all your utility and they go something like 30, 25, 15. I don't personally like it because I like having the option to uh, constantly burst to give me endurance and then also have the option for tendon tactics which gives you a lot of utility between three different traits. Um, so I don't personally prefer that but that's an option if you don't like bursting as much and uh, or switching as much. Um, but this is what I do now. If you look at the DPS tests I did, this build with a axe offhand when you don't need a longbow uh, provides a lot more DPS. Um, when you're switching to a one-handed offhand, you aren't going to interrupt your melee attacks at all. So like if I swap, I would keep attacking if I was attacking a mob. Uh, so it increases your DPS, you're getting a lot of burst and your crit is obviously higher. So overall I like this build a lot better. The other thing is with Omnom Berry Pies, this Whirling Axe hits 15 times in 3 and a quarter seconds. Um, if you're hitting multiple mobs it heals you a ton. Uh, you can find the link to my DPS 
test in this video and it'll show just how much uh, Axe 5 heals when you're hitting like 4 to 5 mobs. So that actually does increase your survivability a lot as well. So as far as the greatsword build goes, um, you're always going to want to take 20 in strength and at least 25 in arms. The rest of it can change a little depending on your playstyle and your group. Uh, so first I'll go over the 2025 part of it. You're going to want Berserker's power and slashing power, which is obvious for increasing your DPS. In the arms line, you're going to want rending strikes. Uh, you're, again, vulnerability on crit, and you're going to have a high crit chance in this build. And then forceful greatsword, which is the primary reason to use greatsword in the first place. You get a lot of stacks of might by yourself. And then you want at least 25 for this attack opportunity. It's really good for five, only 5 more points. You're going to get 10% damage increase because bleeding pretty much the entire time it's always going to be on. Uh, you can do it yourself. And then when you're in a 5 person group, even more bleeding will be on most of the time because someone else will have uh, some source of bleeding. I prefer to go 30 for last chance instead of taking 25 in strength. Stick and move got nerfed so it's only 3% more damage when your endurance isn't at 100% so it's not as good anymore. So I prefer just to go 30 in arms. Um, as far as the last two traits go, um, right now I'm 10 and 10. Again, kind of like the Axe Mace build, 10 is for the 3 trait option with 10 tactics so you can go empowered which is 1.5% damage per boon and usually in a 2 guardian 2 warrior group you're gonna have at least 5 boons uh, 3 you can keep up yourself and then you probably have like protection, regen, retaliation, something like that up so that's gonna give you 7.5% damage and then again you have the option for bow strings or banners um, the other 10 is gonna be discipline for heightened focus the downside to only having 10 discipline is obviously you're not gonna be able to take signet cooldown and then uh, fast hands as well so a lot of people will take 10 out of tactics put 20 into discipline um, it's basically personal preference if you want more utility and uh, slightly higher damage from empowered when you have a lot of boons on you or you like the fast hands and the signet cooldown so that one's more up to you um, as far as gear goes, again, it's just going to be Berserker Greatsword. Right now I just have the Accuracy Sigil in. Um, more critical hits are going to be more healing with Omnum Berry food, more might stacks for yourself, and then uh, more vulnerability stacks for your group. And then I'm using Longbow again because I think it's superior because it has higher direct damage, so with a crit build um, it's more beneficial to have higher direct damage versus the rifle. So this is what I would do if I was fulfilling a DPS role with Greatsword. Again, you can look at my DPS test. Greatsword actually does have the potential to do more DPS than Axe Mace, but it's a lot more situational because you need the mob to stay still. And then obviously you can't dodge as well to get your full 100 blades off. Um, you're also going to do a lot more damage with Whirlwind if a mob is next to a wall. Uh, I personally don't like being rooted and I like the play style of Axe Mace more. It's also a lot more um, consistent with damage. Uh, it's not going to require like a mob to be rooted or by a wall to maximize your DPS because you're always moving with Axe Mace and it's a lot more active, which I prefer. So it's really just a preference. I play with both types of warriors. They're both good for a DPS role. Um, so if you do prefer Greatsword, this is an option. One other thing I wanted to add that I forgot, if you do go the Greatsword build, especially if you don't have Signet cooldown, you want to go Healing Surge, it's better, um, especially since you're always going to have three stacks of Adrenaline. Since you don't use your burst skill, you're always going to get the Stage 3 heal. Um, so most Greatsword Warriors do go Healing Surge instead of Signet. Just wanted to throw that in there. So hopefully this update did help you out a little bit. Um, just wanted to put something out there. So hopefully I don't get as many questions. Uh, thanks for watching.